Chris, I said the day after the speech, I thought net net it would be a political benefit for Republicans. And every piece of data and every conversation I've had since then has only reinforced it. If Joe Biden's intention was to put Democrats on the offense with that speech, commingling his official duties as president with some super partisan rhetoric, I think it was a miscalculation by the White House. I think this has unified and energized Republicans much more than Democrats. And not very many people even saw the speech because it was barely carried by television networks. And I think it's the energy on the right, on social media, on cable and, and talk radio that has really become the animating spirit of this event. Right. Well, I, I think you, you, you point out something that's accurate. The networks knew what it was, that it was not a unifying speech for the country, that it was actually a political speech. So a lot of them didn't carry it, including Newsmax. Isabella, uh, Republican Senator Rick Scott is sounding the alarm that certain Republicans are working to make sure conservative candidates lose in their next election to keep the GOP in the minority in the Senate. Doesn't this prove what, what I've been saying, that there are no unifying princ principles in the Republican Party? They can't even unite to oppose socialism. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, Senator Rick Scott had talked a lot about Mitch McConnell actually even going to left-wing media outlets like the New York Times and the Washington Post, essentially giving them anonymous quotes of trash-talking Republican nominees. And not only is it unforgivable, but it essentially defies the will of the voters. And I think Mitch McConnell needs a little bit of a reality check to remember that who he works for. Well, I... <laughs> Mitch McConnell's been around a long time. I don't think any stern talking to is going to have him get the message. I think he needs to be voted out as leader, in, in, in my humble opinion, and those, those in the Republican Party who are supporting his efforts. Mark, in the meantime, uh, staying with the Senate, one of the Democrat candidates for Senate in Pennsylvania, John Fetterman, watch this. Send me to Washington, D.C. to send so I can work with Senator Casey and I can champion the Union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in D.C. All right. Fetterman has not committed to a debate yet. There's some reporting out there that says he may or may not debate Dr. Mehmet Oz. Fetterman's wife was initially pushing him away from reporters who were asking him for a debate on Oz. But now, now maybe he may, might go through with it. He's not set a date. Uh, uh, you know, and also what's going on out in uh, Arizona where the gubernatorial Democrat gubernatorial candidate there refuses to debate Kerry Lake. Is this electoral victory uh, a strategy good for Democrats? We are owed uh, our positions and we don't have to debate these, these silly Republicans. Is that, a, is that a winner in your view? Well, look, in general, candidates who are ahead don't like to debate. The Fetterman situation is different. He had a stroke. Uh, his campaign wasn't forthcoming about the details of it. As you suggested, he said in an interview just a few minutes ago, that he would commit to a debate, but without specifics. I will tell you, the moderator and questioners in that debate are going to be some pretty influential folks, because how much time they spend trying to drill down on what may be the only high-profile opportunity to get to the bottom of his fitness to be a senator is going to be a big, a big, have a big factor in the entire race. Yeah, and we didn't play the entirety of that soundbite, which has which raised a lot of questions about what you're alluding to right there. Mark Halperin and Isabella DeLuca, thank you very much. Appreciate the time, guys. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. <laughs>